product review time. I've got the Superior Pump Remote Sink and Drain Pump System here. I'm gonna be putting this in in my laundry room and I'm gonna be doing a test on this thing. That could be scary and show my full installation on this thing. Let's get right to it. You're watching On The Mark with Mark. Let's unbox this and see how it looks. I'm going to be using this to lift the discharge water from our washing machine. Now, it doesn't say that it, it can do that, and I'm not sure how many gallons per minute this pump is good for, but I suspect in these instructions it's going to show or tell us. So let's see, we got some instructions here. I'll look those over. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, this is the top. Vent, got the nice sticker on there. Boy, it's really nice plastic and hard looking. Let's see, I got two threaded ports on the top and one just open hole and a threaded port here. I intend to use this one for my water coming in. Oh, this one says discharge over here. And that one says vent. Wonder what that's for then, we'll see. Okay, and oh my gosh, oh, this is the pump. Look at that, one third horsepower. Thermoplastic, of course, with the switch. Looks like a standard sump pump to me. Okay, that's nice. And Piece of threaded, I'm not sure, I don't think it's PVC, but piece of threaded pipe. And look at that, a check valve, one-way valve. That's nice, that'll keep the water that goes up the stack in the stack for the next time. So it doesn't just rush back down into the bucket. Oh, it's got a nice gasket in here. Boy, very, very rubbery feeling and a little bit of hardware. Looks like stainless steel, that's nice. And a rubber plug. I think that's probably for right here. I did think that would be enough of a vent. I can see right through there. There's a couple of holes in there. Nice looking, I'm really impressed with the look of this plastic here. This is gonna look a lot better than our old pump. Here, take a look. This is what the old system looked like. Pretty nasty, I know. Okay, well there's three pieces of hardware. I suspect some more of it. Look at that, it's not very big. My old surge bucket was, boy, it was a good size. It was probably, I don't know, maybe 10 gallons. This looks like maybe four, probably says right on here. Let's see. One third horsepower thermal plastic sump pump motor, one and a half inch discharge, handles three eighth inch solids, vertical float switch, thermal plastic impeller, will handle temperatures up to 120 degrees well, that's not very warm. Stainless steel fasteners, UL listed. Basic feature, structural thermal, no, structural foam construction, corrosion resistance, that's resistant, that's what I really like. 15 by 13 and a half size, gasketed seal, airtight cover. One and a half inch inlet, one and a half inch discharge, one and a half inch vent. Doesn't say anything about how many gallons per minute. Okay, I'm looking in here. All right, there's a boatload of hardware. Kind of was just loose in here. All right, here is 
the sump pump. Comes in its own separate box. Still by Superior Pump. Owner's manual here. Looks like it covers several different manuals. Let's see if we can find capacities here. Troubleshooting. Okay, output gallons per minute at listed discharge height. Though it does, it does matter how tall a pipe you gotta go up to. And we're going a little over eight foot, so let's go by the 10 foot. Holy smokes, uh, the low end is 30 gallons per minute. I think that's probably gonna handle what I need to do, but I wanna do a, a test on this thing. I'm gonna take this outside and fill the bucket up and uh, see what it'll do. Looks nice. Two quarts, that's interesting. Oh, I see. This one here is actually the switch. And you plug in like that. So only when this raises up does it allow power to transfer across here to the pump. That's interesting. It surprises me a little bit that those are separate like that. Boy, I got plenty of cord, that's for sure. Yeah, that's at least 10 feet of cord there. I'm gonna need two feet. Okay, so if you look right over there, this is where my pump is gonna sit right there. Let's see how it does fit in that little spot there. It's gonna be down there. Boy, that goes right out of the way, actually. Probably gonna sit in here. 45 degrees like that and then I'm gonna have my pipe run across the wall here it's gonna go over to where the dishwasher is that is nice and neat it does show that this can be used for a washing machine well in fact look it's even showing a utility sink which I'm adding so that's nice I'll get a better picture of this before I go too far with this lift pump installation, I wanna run a test on this pump and compare it to my old pump. So I'm gonna take them both outside and uh, we're gonna set up kind of a, a geyser situation here. Now this won't be a scientific test because I'm not gonna pay attention to how many gallons per minute the thing is pumping but I do want to see just how high it can launch the water straight up out of this thing. So let me get set up out here on the driveway and then uh, we'll get started. I'm going to first plug in the original pump that I had down in the laundry room, but we'll see how high of a geyser this thing will put off. I think it's probably going to be in the frame. I really don't know how high this thing can shoot, but I'm gonna plug it in now and uh, we'll see what she's got. Well, that's a bit disappointing. Here's the test of the new pump system. This bucket holds less water than what my original one did, but the other one just dumped right into it anyway, so it's not a test of volume. But let's see how high this one can pump. I think it pumped higher. That is the same pipe that I had on my old one. Now that was how quick it let its uh, switch shut itself off. Boy, it emptied it that fast. That wasn't very long. I put my check valve over there on the wall. And here's why. If I ever want to open this thing up to clean it out, or maybe the pump gives out or something, I'm gonna need to 
disconnect it from this system here. I've got two hose type couplings here that I will be able to disconnect and then I'll be able to pull this whole assembly away and it just plugs in right there so I'll be able to unplug it and it'll be free. Now with my check valve right here, that means this water will stay in this pipe. If I had the check valve over here, if I disconnected this here, all of the water in that pipe right there, and in fact over to here and up there, would all come shooting out at me. And I don't like that idea. So I moved my check valve over here onto the wall. Seemed like a good idea. Now I can disconnect to here. The trade-off is, yes, the check valve closes right here, and this water from here, or the water in this pipe right here flows back into the pump. That's not very much water. It's not enough that it would trigger the pump to run again and try to push it up there. So I don't think that that's a bad compromise. And I think being able to do the maintenance there is an important issue. This came with this nice plug here and it's got little slits in it that the cords can go in like that and that. There. Now that seals this up pretty good. There is a vent right here, but otherwise this is fully installed. Now we've got quite a bit of cords here. This cord down here is for my existing sump pump. Don't pay any attention to that. It's plugged in right here. This is my uh, sink and uh, washing machine pump. So this is the wires that it came with, and it came with two 10-foot cords. One of them, this one right here, is actually just for the switch, and this is actually the power going to the pump. Well, I needed two feet of cord, so that would make for a huge rat's nest of cords here. So I spent some time and uh, a few cable ties and uh, I came up with a method of kind of building sort of a bridge across here with the cable ties or zip cut ties, whatever you want to call them, and uh, put this bundle together. I don't know if that looks neater than a bunch of wires just thrown in the corner. It, it certainly is going to be easier to clean around it this way than a whole bunch of wires. And I can still unplug it and uh, stand that up out of the way. You saw already how this closes around these wires here. I thought that was a very neat little addition that they came up with. I've got the water on at the sink right now. So water's draining in here and I'm just gonna keep talking and you'll get an idea of how loud this is. Now keep in mind we're right beside this so it might seem a little louder than what you might expect. Now it just turned on and I just continued talking like I was. Well, it drained the whole thing that quickly. So it might seem a little louder than what you might expect. Now it just turned on. I'm pretty impressed with uh, this uh, pump's abilities to really move the water. It, uh, it's probably gonna fill up again here in a minute and uh, we'll get another test of uh, how loud it is. I had a lot of fun with this. I paid $250 and some change for this thing. I can easily recommend it. In fact, I really love this thing, especially when you compare it to what we had before. It was, it was really pretty gross and this is a, a nice clean system here. And uh, I got a little carried away with some of the plumbing. I'll, I'll show you my whole system here uh, just for grins so you can see how I've got this thing set up. This is a model 92072-U. There it is, it's going again. You can hear it pumping. So I don't think it's very loud. 
You can also hear that uh, check valve slamming shut. Pumping, pumping, pumping. Here's how mine is laid out. It goes in along side of the, behind the washing machine. Now I was worried that that one and a half inch pipe with the uh, slope, it's between an eighth and a quarter of an inch of drop per foot. I was afraid that that wouldn't move the water fast enough for the washing machine pump to discharge. If you've ever seen a washing machine discharge, they really haul a lot of water all at once. So what I did is I put in this four inch diameter PVC as kind of a tower here so that that could act as a, a surge tank and it'll hold one gallon and three quarts. So that was my insurance that it was gonna be able to work out. I was a little worried about that pump, whether it could pump it fast enough, but that pump has proved itself to be way better than what I had anticipated. And also the one and a half inch pipe just moves the water just fine. There's, there's no water getting stored in that uh, four inch stack there. Another thing I could have done is uh, I could have put a valve down there at the bottom and then I could have adjusted how much water was being discharged into the one and a half inch pipe but I didn't want to overdo it. And this sink here does have a trap on it. However, however, there is no chance of any sewer gases coming through because it's just going into that reservoir with the pump. Can I recommend this system here? I absolutely can. The only thing that I would change if I was a superior pump is I would put the hardware in some kind of a of a bag or, or something, wrap it up. It was all just loose in the box, which when I got the box and I kind of rolled it around a little bit and I heard all these loose parts inside, I thought, oh no, is it broken? And I don't know how they did it, but there wasn't any missing, but loose parts in a box like that, I don't think is a good idea. I don't know how much it would cost them to have a little Ziploc bag and throw all those 10 bolts and nuts in there, but that's about the only complaint that I have about the thing. Otherwise, it's just beautiful. There's, there's probably other pumps that work just as good. I don't know. This is the one I bought. I liked it. You'll probably like it too. Um, if you thought this review uh, showed you more than what you knew before, uh, hit that like button for me. And I'm always looking for new subscribers. If you want to see the full installation of this pump plus all the plumbing I did in my laundry room here, there's a playlist on my home improvements. It's a three-parter, so be ready to, to watch a few of them. Thanks for subscribing. I appreciate all my subscribers. If you've already subscribed, thank you. I want you to know that I really do appreciate you. Thanks for watching.